What is it about Foxboro that makes us proud to live here? I love living in Foxboro. It has a small town feel, but it's so close to the city. I love riding my bike in my neighborhood. I love the Moms Club in Foxboro. I like the playgrounds. I love living close to my grandchildren. Yay! Over the years, people have come to Foxboro to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city. Known as the straw hat capital, early life centered around the town common, and townspeople reveled in a sense of community, just as they do today. I grew up in Foxboro. Um, my mother was the town clerk in town for about 26 years. My mother-in-law worked at the Barrel School for about a decade. Um, my husband and I are, are both of this area, and when we started looking for a house um, and a place to settle down, we gravitated towards Foxboro because it's just a wonderful community, and we had a lot of friends and family from the area. When the news broke that morning, we woke up and saw it and said, oh my goodness, we, we really need to take a stand here. Stephanie Crimmins learned about other concerned residents who had started a Facebook site. Together, they formed a grassroots group of volunteers. I have a finance background, and uh, one of the, my first jobs out of college was to analyze junk bonds or high-yielding bonds. Um, and so um, I actually analyzed, for a living, some casino credits years ago. So I, I got very familiar with the business of casinos. In 1994, Stephanie was part of a casino fact-finding committee the town of Foxborough brought together to look at the prospect of casino gambling. We saw that for small towns, for small communities, the impact of a casino could be really, really detrimental. Um, crime, traffic, drugs, guns, all of these things became very problematic in the towns overnight. And then the other thing is, I mean, these are huge, huge developments, and all of the infrastructure in town becomes burdened significantly. Um, and, you know, as a small town with um, volunteer selectmen, how, do, how does a small town handle such a development? Former chairman of the Foxborough Board of Selectmen, Tony LaChapelle, served on a similar committee that studied gambling in 2004. We said no to gambling at that time. We did a, a significant amount of research. We appointed a committee that did yeoman's work in researching what had happened in communities uh, in other areas of New England, uh, Foxwoods and Mohegan Sun, and came back with enough information that scared us off. And that was like the third or fourth time since the 90s that the town had voted against gambling. Is a casino right for Foxborough? Could it change the character of a small New England town? Las Vegas casino developer Steve Wynn and businessman Robert Kraft are adamant that their promises of jobs, money, and gifts for the town outweigh the concerns. Some people believe they may be right. To better understand what a casino development might mean for Foxborough, we took our questions to our New England neighbors the residents and town leaders in the Connecticut communities that surround Mohegan Sun and Foxwoods casinos. The day Foxwoods opened, the town changed immensely. The traffic is, for most of the people in, around this area, a really big issue. I mean, you, you saw my road. I live on a little teeny country road. My road is a cut through for the Foxwoods employees to get to their lot. It makes it interesting because it's 24 hours, the patrons go 24 hours, but the employees also do. So there's a lot of um, employee traffic. And the employees tend to drive more on the, country, you know, the side roads because it's faster than getting on the main roads and getting stuck in traffic. Prior to the casino, it was somewhere around four to 5,000 cars a day. Now it can be anywhere from 25 to 30,000 cars a day. And it's, it's a historic community. Homes are, are close to 300 years old. They're built close to the road. So the buses and the trucks that go by there 24-7 um, have a real negative impact. So many cars ran into our stone wall. I got the name, the Wall Lady. Carol Matsumoto owns and operates a successful bed and breakfast in the Preston village of Pocotonic on Route 2A between Mohegan Sun and Foxwoods. Traffic went from like 3,400 to over 13,000 cars a day. And it doesn't stop at night, and it goes 24 hours a day. Our house next door has probably, the, the stone wall has probably been hit in excess of 40 times. 
People come into the casino, go as fast as they possibly can. They throw their garbage out. They don't care. Um, we're in the way. Nick Mullane, first selectman of North Stonington, a small town adjacent to Foxwoods, shares Carol's concerns. The quiet life on the side streets is greatly disrupted. You know, the secondary roads take a heck of an impact. People will drive around and where the um, casino will attract a lot of traffic, it'll always also divert a lot of the local traffic because they know the ways around. So the people in the side roads within, you know, 10 miles, 15 miles will get a lot more traffic. My name is Paul Guggen and I live on Fox Road with my wife, Ann. And uh, family's all grown up. I had four children. They all went to Foxborough High School. And now I have 11 grandchildren. And I worked for 40 years for a, a, a union company. And I'm vehemently opposed to gambling in Foxborough. My wife and I, we laugh when we go up to Route 1. Some days we can't even get on there. That's now when games are big things going on at the Kraft Stadium and the traffic is heavy anyway without anything going on anywhere up there. And I understand that the concern now is if we have the casino, there'll be an extra 20,000 cars per day in our area, which we don't need. My biggest concern about having a casino within a mile of my school is that it will um, almost force me to close my business. The Goddard School on Route 1 in Walpole has been an important resource for early childhood education in the area for more than a decade. Each year, some 100 children are graduated from the Goddard. As a resident of Foxborough, a mom of seven kids herself, and a business owner, Shelley Alexander is hesitant to welcome a casino into the community. As soon as it was announced in the news, I had several parents approach me and saying, you know, they were glad that their child would be graduating before a casino would come here because no matter how much they liked it here, just the, um, the traffic alone um, and the environment that would be created, that they would not send their child here. My property ends right here, as does my next door neighbor. Um, so we're direct abutters to the casino land, or what is proposed to be the casino land. Mike McCarthy and his family moved to South Walpole two years ago, <laughs> fully aware that the property right. boarding his land was zoned for economic development. The Kraft Group had originally proposed a life science biotech park in what now serves as a parking lot. Obviously at that time two years ago, casinos were not a part of Massachusetts and we never dreamed that a casino would be there. The zoning changes that they were proposing back in late August suggested buildings of 200 feet, 300 feet. Whatever does go there is constantly going to be in uh, eyesight, in earshot, and uh, it's always going to be in the forefront of our minds that we are next to a casino and that our kids are playing directly next to a casino. When I talk about fears, um, and that's what these are, um, one of my biggest fears is the socioeconomic impact of the development. If there are a lot of medium to low wage workers, and there are supposedly thousands, that are going to be looking for places to live, places to eat, then what's going to happen in the marketplace is you're going to have more, potentially more fast food restaurants, you're going to have more motels, you're going to have more duplexes that with lower rent that support people who have part time jobs or lower wage jobs who need to live and work in these particular developments. So this has happened consistently. You can go to Connecticut, um, where I lived in that area, and you can draw circles around those casinos, and that's pretty much what has happened in Norwich and Uncasville and Stonington and Ledger and those areas. So it's there. You can just see it. And that would be a significant fear for this community, that it would change the character of the town forever. I was born in Uncasville, Connecticut. Um, lived there for 22 years and uh, went to school, went to the Uncasville Elementary School and Mottville High School and graduated from there and I left um, to join the Marine Corps. It was a very small town. My, my father was the uh, chief of the fire department so we were very involved in the town. Um, 
and we lived not that far from which would be the center of town um, and we could walk from my house to down to the downtown safe you know knew everybody everybody on the street so if we did anything by the time we got home my parents already knew about it because it was that kind of town every year we would have the harvest festival and because my dad was involved in the fire department um, they would have a booth at the harvest festival there were shows a lot like Founders Day, um, but the fire department would always make clam chowder, so we were always very involved in that and always go to that every year. There's no longer a harvest festival. There's no longer um, those small town things that keep a community close and, and bound together because the casino has just taken away from that. The whole town just seemed to take on a sadness. Um, there wasn't that same feeling of a close-knit community. It just seems depressed. Today, many of Lori's family still live in the Uncasville area. They've grown used to it, but they feel like they've lost that small town feel. They've lost the feeling of a close-knit community. They don't know their neighbors anymore. And times change and things happen, but you know, Foxborough has never lost those things. So you, it makes you wonder why has Uncasville and Mottville lost those things. Southeastern Connecticut is one of the highest DUI rates in the entire state. Uh, my small rural town on some years, we've gotten 35 to 40 on an annual basis, which is highly unusual. Uh, the DUIs are any time during the day and night. It's not uh, a thing that's have to hap after happy hour or anything like that. It's just all the time. Most of the people that hit our wall are asleep. You go into the casinos, they go into the casinos, they might play for 24 hours, 36 hours, there's extra oxygen in the casinos. They come out, they get in their car, they fall asleep. In recent years, Foxborough has witnessed a dramatic increase in the number of arrests for operating under the influence. In 2010, the town reported 53 OUIs. That number grew to 82 in 2011. Foxborough currently has a total of 38 liquor licenses. Of those, 13 are held by businesses at Patriot Place and two are held by Gillette Stadium. So what happens now if there's a problem with a liquor license holder, there's underage drinking, they are not abiding by the rules, the town can monitor, manage, and punish the liquor license holder they can revoke the license, which we have done in the past. If that happens at the casino development, we have absolutely no control over that, and that control will go to the state. A 2009 report commissioned by the state of Connecticut to analyze the economic and social impacts of gambling revealed treatment facilities for gambling addiction in the state increased from one clinic in 1996 to 17 clinics by 2008. Embezzlement cases rose from 43 arrests in 1991, the year prior to Foxwood's opening, to 214 arrests in 2007, a 397% increase. The estimated cost to Connecticut businesses and municipalities during that time period alone? Seven and a half million dollars. One thing that it surprised us, every town within 15 or 20 miles will end up a higher accounting bill for the town because the amount of scrutiny that they're going to go through to look at the different departments to make sure somebody isn't stealing money. We go through an inquisition by the auditors. Do you know if anybody has any financial problems? Do you know of any fraud? Do you know of any embezzlement? Has there been any mismanagement of money? Et cetera, et cetera, and so forth. And they instill in your mind that you're in a risk area where money could be lost. Anywhere that's w within a quarter of a mile of the traveled routes uh, has seen probably close to a 20% decline in valuation, and that's after adjusting for the downturn in the economies. The gray home across the street went in foreclosure. They owed 149000 on it. The bank ended up selling it for thirty-eight. The home on the other side of us started at 189,000 and sold at auction for 55. I, I don't know of any families here right now. Would you raise a family on a road that gets that kind of traffic? Many people that live 
in, in those traveled routes that that their home was their their equity or their life savings it's been depleted or wiped out uh, in Norwich they've uh, uncovered a lot of places where they've put in illegal apartments divided up the houses made basements into rooms because they do something they call hot bedding where people stay in the house but for you have the bed for eight hours then you have to leave and that same bed has three people in it every day. I know um, in certain neighborhoods there are houses that contain casino workers. They rent them because people are unable to sell their homes because no one wants to purchase a home that's close to the casino. So they rent them and in one particular neighborhood that I'm very familiar with um, there's a home that contains 10 to 14 the, the people that I'm familiar with have lost count, people that work at the casino. And because they work shifts and they work very long shifts, it's a rotating people of coming in. They do not take care of the house. The neighborhood has gone completely downhill. And also in this neighborhood, um, the people that I'm familiar with knew everybody in the neighborhood now. There's only three or four original families that contain in the neighborhood. Everybody else is now casino workers. According to the 2009 report on gambling, Casinos have had a dramatic effect on local school districts. The report cites that the town of Norwich spends $2 million annually to operate English for Speakers of Other Languages, ESOL, programs. Because of the cost for this program, among other things, the district was forced to eliminate a full-day kindergarten program, close an elementary school, and shut down many after-school activities. I think the last count, Norwich had something like 31 or 33 languages spoken in their school system. It has a huge impact on the cost of providing services. My name is Joan Sozio. I've served on the Board of Water and Sewer Commissioners for 16 years between the years of 1988 and 2004. And I am concerned about our water supply because we cannot take on another big development such as the stadium in this town because we do not have enough water. We don't even know the number of beds that are going to be in that whole hotel. We see a big pond in front of that hotel. We see lavish landscapings, and I'm wondering how are they going to water that in the summertime when we can't even water our wa lawns every other day. They're going to be having a swimming pool. They're going to be having saunas. They're going to be operating 24-7 and we, we don't even know how much water they're going to be used and we don't have that kind of water to support such a, a development up in Route 1 like that. And even without the casino here, we are in trouble because we have to maintain the water in our tanks for firefighting purposes and for drinking water and we can't waste it out on the landscape. Of all the people that I know in Uncasville, um, family, extended family, friends, only one person works at the casino and that's my nephew. I know people that have gone to apply to the casino but because of the, the low pay, you know, they can't afford to take a job there and it's very, very long hours. There's days that I know my nephew works 12 hours. Members of No Foxborough Casino have repeatedly stated they are 100% in favor of jobs. They support risk-free alternatives for the proposed site sustainable jobs with high-paying salaries that would allow employees to support the many wonderful restaurants and businesses that currently exist in Foxborough and the surrounding area. The impact on the local businesses is that they're going out of business. They, they can't hire people. Um, we had 85, no, 55 businesses closed last year on Ledger, small businesses. It's, we have a lot of empty storefronts. There's, the casino doesn't generate revenue for businesses. They, people don't stop at the local businesses and the local businesses have a hard time employing people. They're um, uh, regressive. They take more money out of people, low-income people's pockets. Uh, everyone knows that they're cannibalistic. In other words, they eat other forms of revenue. When people are putting billions down the slots, they're not buying a new car and they're not fixing up their house. Former State Senator Susan Tucker served on a number of committees including Ways and Means and Economic Development and Emerging Technologies. Okay. Years of study helped her to form an opinion that casinos bring more harm than good to small communities. So how can it be good for the economy 
of your region to have hundreds and millions, if not a billion dollars, dumped down slots to get shipped out of state to make a few very wealthy men wealthier. When we did our research the last time this came up, we found that consistently the casino developers overpromised and underdelivered. And so what they do is they come in and they promise that this is the amount of money that will be generated, the amount of tax revenue uh, that will be generated, the number of jobs that will be generated, and these are all good things for the community. The problem is, even if they put it in writing, you cannot hold them to it. I mean, how do you force a casino operator, if their business is struggling, to hire 200 more people because they said they were going to five years ago? How do you do that? Foxwoods Casino celebrated its 20th anniversary on February 15, 2012. Foxwoods is currently $2.3 billion in debt. Mohegan Sun in nearby Uncasville is currently $1 billion in debt. And Wynn Resorts is $3.2 billion in debt, as cited in their annual report for the fiscal year ending December 2011. A casino in Foxborough would have a minimum lease of 75 years, per requirement set down by the Massachusetts Expanded Gaming Bill. What mitigation does is it um, provides to the town from the developer uh, things, assets, cash, it could be money, it could be changes in infrastructure. It helps to soften the blow of the negative impacts of whatever the developer plans to do to the town. So mitigation only comes into play if there are bad things happening. The deal that's before you now or next year, what is presented to you, will not be the same deal that your selectmen 10 years from now are dealing with. If there's one thing, the industry is no, it's notorious for broken promises. So the other uh, significant uh, lack of control is who the owner is and who the landlord of the casino is. Because today, we can pick up the phone and call the stadium. We can call the craft organization. I could get Jonathan Kraft on the phone in five minutes today. If a casino operator who lives in Las Vegas runs the casino, when we have a problem, we're going to pick up the phone and talk to a law firm in Boston, or we're going to talk to somebody in Las Vegas. Or five years down the road, the casino has sold, we're going to be calling somebody in the Philippines. And that is a control fear that we should all be aware of. Should there be a casino or should there not be a casino? In her own words, middle school student Sarah Spillane wrote a letter to the Foxborough Reporter sharing her concerns about a casino from a teen point of view. One final point I would like to make is a bit more personal. I've gone to Patriot's Place on a Friday night with my friends to see a movie or to shop. My parents are okay with that but I think that this would change with a casino right next door. I don't think my parents would feel it was safe for me and my friends to be there without an adult when a gambling building offering free drinks is very close by. Looking back, almost everyone who lives in this town would have fought the casino. The benefits of jobs have been great for the state, but they're not great for the town. I mean, 400 people who live in Ledged work at the casino. It benefits the region for jobs, but it doesn't benefit the community. And if we had it had a chance to fight the casino, the town would have done it. If I had a blank sheet of paper when we were back 20 years ago before this started, uh, and, and our town had a chance to be at the table, there, there would certainly you want to talk about the impact on police and fire, um, the impact on quality of life from the traffic. I think you have to decide what you want to be when you grow up. Um, you know, we were a small rural town. Many of us in this town kind of missed that. We are one of the most economically fortunate communities in the state. We're not laying people off. We are building a library. How many communities in the state are building libraries? We've grown to love this town 
and, and our, our daughter has grown up here and she's turned out amazing. The Foxborough schools are amazing. She's at Northeastern. You know, our life has been so successful here and I want to keep that, you know, because that's, we've grown so happy and I, I don't want to lose that happiness. Two, three, go! Our, our kids are fourth generation Foxborough children and we really hope that we can stay in Foxborough and our kids can grow up and have the same type of wonderful childhood with wonderful memories as my husband and I did.